on behalf of the family here at Pleasant Hill and on behalf of our pastor that's spending time on the beach with his family, it is my honor to welcome you to Pleasant Hill Baptist Church today. If you are a guest and you're new to Pleasant Hill, we want to ask you to uh, do us the honor, and you'll see a number on the screen here. We would ask you to text that number uh, with your name and some information about you, and one of our ministers will contact you this week. Uh, to just talk with you and uh, share with you about what's going on here at the life, uh, in the life of Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. Uh, and also, if you have any prayer requests, uh, feel free to send those also to this number. And as a staff, we will pray for you and your family this week. We're so thankful that you made the decision to worship with us today at Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. Please join me in a word of prayer uh, as we continue to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather here today to worship you in his spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. children in the room, would you please stand? I wish you could come and gather with me, but I just want y'all to stand so I can see y'all. Uh, I've often wondered what it felt like to do a children's message uh, with all of these stuffed animals. I've often wondered what it felt like. Uh, I've been watching Brother Bill do this for uh, about 12 weeks now, and now I can empathize with him. I kind of feel like I'm Mr. Rogers in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Uh, i got all these animals around me, and, uh, and you know, I want to talk to them, but I'm afraid they might talk back. If they did, I'd probably take off running out the back door. But uh, uh, we've got some really special stuffed animals here that represent all of our children, and I'm just so thankful that we have these here to represent our children uh, while we can't be together and while we can't be close together. And I've got a couple of special ones here. I've got one. Uh, we got Brooklyn. 
uh, that we need to give a special shout out to this week because Brooklyn had her appendix removed uh, this last week. So we need to keep Brooklyn in our prayers. And also we have Allie. Allie broke her arm sometime back and she had to get her cast uh, redone this last week. So well, let's remember Allie and Brooklyn in our prayers. But today I want to talk to, to you all about you know, God calling us. Uh, God calling us even in the midst of different things that are going on in our life. And I brought some little things here that I want to share with you. You know, this is, a, uh, this is an older telephone. This is a cordless telephone. I'm sure some of y'all may still have some of these in your home. Uh, but this one doesn't work anymore. The battery's died on it and we've moved on to something newer. But you can take this phone and you can actually, if you dial in the right number, you can actually call someone. And we use telephones like this uh, to stay in touch with our loved ones. Uh, and also to stay in touch with uh, those that we care about and they can call us. And moving on down the line, I've also got a, uh, a little flip phone here. Now this one's an ancient one. I don't know if any of you can remember uh, a phone quite like this. This was one of my favorite phones. It was very small, uh, it had a little camera in it, and you could actually text with this phone if you knew the combination of which letters lined up with which numbers. And you had to be pretty smooth to be able to do that uh, and figure out your message and type it in. And same thing, you could actually use this to make phone calls to your loved ones. I've got something really interesting right here I want to show you. When my oldest son uh, was uh, about four years old, he came up with this little device right here. It is, a, it is two blocks of wood with a hinge on it, and he found this in some little game somewhere. I'm not sure where he got this from, but when I would go to work, he would miss his dad, and he would take this phone, and he would actually call and have a pretend conversation with me. And I remember him doing that. I remember slipping in on him one night, uh, and he was actually having a conversation with his dad on this little wooden, uh, what looks like a cell phone. And I just kept this because it was just so precious. Uh, and, you know, as we move on to, through technology and how phones have made such a difference, now we have a device that looks like this. And you can do so much with this device. You can call your family members, you can text them, you can uh, not only text them, but you can what you do call a, a FaceTime. I think all my children probably know what FaceTime is. Uh, FaceTime is something really special, and now they have this thing called Zoom. You can talk to so many people at one time, and you can call them, and they can call you. But there's one key to this. You know, if you get a phone call on your phone, there's, a, there's two little icons that come up. One of them says accept, one of them says decline. You either accept the call and can talk to the person, or you decline and they can either leave a voicemail. Now, if I get a call from San Diego or Washington, D.C. Or, 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 or something like that, a lot of times I will just decline it and let it go to voicemail uh, if I don't know who it is. But we have to make the decision whether we will accept the call or decline the call. And the same is true when God speaks to us. So children, I want you to understand that God speaks to you. And he speaks to you at different times and different seasons in life. But God is always speaking. God is always calling. But we have to make the decision. Will we accept the call or will we decline the call? He's going to call you in many ways. But one way that I know he calls children is when they get to a certain age and they understand uh, between right and wrong and they understand, uh, they start asking questions about what it means to be a Christian and God is tugging at your heart. You have to make that decision to accept that call or decline that call. I want to encourage you, always, when God calls, talk to your parents, talk to your pastor, and always be willing to accept the call. Let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you call out to us. We thank you that you, that you love us so much that you always are continually calling out to us. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, you're always calling. God, give us the courage and the strength and the wisdom to always accept your call and to act on it. In Jesus' name, amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. 
tonight to show our worship team some love. They did an awesome job tonight leading us into the throne of grace. They did an awesome job. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, worship team and accompaniments. Thank you, males, for everything that you do uh, for this church to make this, these worship services possible. And tonight I want to just talk about how God still calls in the midst of crazy times like we're living in. How God still calls, God still speaks, God still moves, even though we're living in crazy times. And we are truly living in some crazy days. Uh, not only in the world, but just the weather here lately has been crazy. Uh, Christy and I have to 
take our time in between rain showers uh, to go and mow the grass. Now, I'm just going to tell you, if you rode by our house yesterday, uh, Christy was on the tractor with an umbrella mowing the grass. I had the push mower. I had an umbrella, and I was mowing the grass. We had to get it done. It was growing, and there was no other time to do it. So we, uh, we were out with umbrellas mowing the grass in the rain. It just uh, seemed like the weather patterns that we have this summer uh, are just almost as crazy as the world is today. Uh, but we are living in different times. Uh, it seems that the world has gone crazy with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, if you have children in public school, they had to finish the last nine weeks either online or some form of online uh, type interaction to complete their school year. Uh, if you like to go out to eat, your lifestyle has really changed. And I'm going to tell you, I, I didn't go out to eat a lot in the first half of my life. I really embraced it in the second half of my life. But I haven't got to do it very much uh, in the last uh, three months uh, because just of the fear of, of the virus and everything that's happening. The last time that uh, I went out to eat and enjoyed, enjoyed a meal uh, was at Cracker Barrel in Batesville, Mississippi on March the 13th. You know, it means a lot to me if I go back and I can trace the date. March the 13th for lunch, we were traveling back from Jonestown, Mississippi on a mission trip. So I, we dropped off at uh, Cracker Barrel uh, there and I fed the team that went with us to Jonestown. And oh, I tell you what, that was so good. I can still taste those Cracker Barrel biscuits and I can taste the, the food in my mouth right now. It was so good. Uh, I look forward to the day when we can go out to eat again without the uh, fear of getting sick. Uh, but today I want, you know, not only are we dealing with a pandemic, but our country is facing a social unrest like I've never seen in my lifetime. We're experiencing things that is just unheard of. All the chaos, all the riots, and all the protests that are going on uh, is just very unsettling. But as unsettling as this is, we need to understand that God is still on his throne, God is in control, and God still has the world in his hands. And in the middle of this chaos to today, what I want to share with you is that God is still calling. We have to remain focused as believers and followers of Christ. We have to remain focused because our attention can be diverted so much by all the bad news uh, that we are hearing uh, in the news today. I've got to the point where I turn the news on about every other day because it's just so much to take in, uh, and it, it tends to make me uh, worry and get my mind off track what it really ought to be on. Uh, so I try to get some highlights occasionally and, and try to understand what's going on in the world, but the more that I read God's Word, the closer that I follow Him, I understand without a shadow of a doubt that God is still calling us to be salt and light in this world while we're still here. You know, uh, in the middle of this chaos, when it seems like the world is firing out of control, we need to remember God is calling. God is calling. You know, with everything going on in the world, we can definitely become distracted. And so we need to remain focused on what God is calling us to do. Now, as Christians, we need to have common sense. We need to wash our hands. If you feel like you need to wear a mask out in public, please wear a mask to say well. Well, but at the same time, we need to stay focused uh, and still listen for God's call. In the very beginning, in the very beginning of time, it was all darkness. All darkness, and God called out and said, let there be light. And there was light. God called again, the lands and the oceans were formed. God called again, and the grass and the trees were created. God called again, and the sun and the moon and the stars were formed, and day and night was formed. God called again, and the animals were created. Now think about this. It all started with darkness, but God called out, and something great happened. God called again and said, let's create man in our image. He created man. God saw that man, uh, not only uh, God saw that man and everything that he created was very good, but then God saw that Adam was alone. Adam was experienced in a type of darkness. He was alone. God caused Adam to fall asleep. He caused him to fall into a deep sleep. God performed the first surgery. He took a rib out of his side and created woman. And God said it was very good. And I'm here to tell you, I'm so glad that God created women. Amen, men? I mean, you can't, some people say you can't live with them, can't live without them. I'm going to tell you, I can't live without them. I love my wife dearly. Uh, she, is, she is a rock in my life. I love Christy dearly. Uh, but God created women. He said it was very good. Uh, and he, he calls something great to come out of something, that, out of Adam's loneliness. Out of darkness, God created the earth and life, and it was very, very good. Now, God called out again. He gave Adam and Eve freedom 
of choice and freedom to do what they wanted to do. He said, Adam and Eve, guys, y'all can, do, y'all can have anything in this garden that you like, but you can't eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, God gave them freedom. He loved them so much. Adam and Eve, they failed. They sinned. Now, they, they chose to eat of the tree. They chose to go their own way. They chose to be disobedient. But God did not turn his back on them. We can tell that God loved them very much. God did not turn his back on Adam and Eve. God called out and said, where are you? Now, God knew where Adam and Eve was. He knew exactly where they were, but he wanted Adam and Eve to know that he cared. In the darkest time of humanity, God called out and said, where are you? And, and, and Adam answered, and he, he said, God, we, we were afraid. And, and, God, and God comforted him and said, Adam, he basically said, Adam, I love you because of the way that he treated Adam. We know that that God disciplines those who belong to him. God disciplined Adam and Eve. He told Adam and Eve how to live. He told them how to survive. He said, Eve, you know, you're going to have some struggles when you bear children. He told Adam and Adam that you're going to have to till the ground. You're going to have to grow your own crops. He told them uh, how they were going to have to grow food. Out of all of this, God called out. Out of this darkness, out of this darkness, God called out, and great things happened. As we fast forward in history, uh, we know that, that the, the world started spiraling out of control. And we know that sin started running rampant on this earth. And we know that, uh, that in Genesis chapter 6, it says God was grieved and regretted making mankind. God was grieved and regretted making mankind. But then Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In the darkest moment of human history, when God was grieved that he created mankind, he called out to Noah... Noah obeyed God. Noah built an ark just as God told him to. Noah took his family on the ark along with all the other animals, and he saved the human race. If Noah would not have listened to God when God called out, we would not be here today. Out of darkness, God called out, and something great happened. God calls all throughout the Bible, all throughout history. He continually calls today for everyone listening to make a positive difference in the dark days in which we live. I want everyone, if you will, take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. And I want to read a passage of Scripture that Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. Uh, And they're living in some days that are uncertain. But Paul is talking to the Corinthian church and talking to them about what it means to be called and how God calls people. I want to ask if you're physically able, if you would stand, and let me read this, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 31. It says, Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many of you were noble by birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ's righteousness, holiness, and redemption. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let no one... Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Paul is calling out to the Corinthian church, and you may be seated. Paul is calling out to the Corinthian church, and he is telling the church that God calls all type of different people to fulfill the will of God in this world. Paul is calling out. I can just picture Paul calling out and looking at his congregation and seeing all the different ones and how they were called and how they used their gifts. And he's sharing with them that many times that God will choose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God will choose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. And so tonight, I want us to look at three uh, Bible characters, three people in the Bible, that shows us that God does call the unlikely. God does call, even in dark times. God does call... Even in the midst of chaos, God is still speaking. God is still calling. Uh, God calls the unlikely. In verse 27, we see that God chose the foolish to shame the wise. God chose the foolish to shame shame the wise. You know, God calls the unlikely. In Luke chapter 19, God chose and called Zacchaeus. 
Now, everybody knows the story about Zacchaeus. You know, Zacchaeus was a foolish man. Zacchaeus was a, was a tax collector, and Zacchaeus was, uh, was not an honest tax collector. He was an official. Uh, he was not liked by the Jewish people, uh, but he, did, he was called by the Roman government to collect taxes. And he collected many taxes, and it was uh, very overbearing on the people of that day. If you can imagine going to Walmart and picking up your items and going to the, the, the checkout line and you check out your items and you know the drill, you have to check out your items and then at the end of checking out your items when your bill is totaled, you have to either swipe your card uh, or pay by check, however you pay that. And when you come and your bill is totaled, you have a total of your items and then you see there's a sales tax and it's, you, it's 7%. And you're prepared to pay that because you know that. Well, back in Zacchaeus' day, if Zacchaeus lived, let's just say Zacchaeus fast forward in time and he lived today. If you checked out all your items and you paid your sales tax inside Walmart, but yet you walked out to your car, and then Zacchaeus was sitting over to the left where some people sit, sometimes collecting money for charity, Zacchaeus would be sitting there, and you wouldn't have an option. You'd have to go by Zacchaeus' table. You would have to pay him his tax. He'd say, wait just a minute. Not only are we take collecting taxes for the state of Mississippi, but we're also collecting tax taxes for uh, the, this nation. We're also collecting taxes for other purposes. And by the way, I'm going to collect taxes just because I want to. Now, I'm just going to tell you, I would not like Zacchaeus very much. Uh, and so it kind of paints a picture of just how hated Zacchaeus was in that day. But God still called out to Zacchaeus. Even though Zacchaeus was selfish, even he only lived for himself, uh, Zacchaeus was not only uh, a wee little man, but Zacchaeus was also a greedy uh, little man. And to top it all off, Zacchaeus, a grown man, he ended up climbing a tree to look for Jesus. In spite of all this, God still called Zacchaeus. God chose the foolish to shame the wise. God called a selfish tax collector, and he responded to the call of God. You know, today in America, we have to be careful that we don't fall in the trap of greed, just like Zacchaeus did. You know, Zacchaeus couldn't get enough money. Zacchaeus, uh, he charged people extra because he wanted more, he wanted more, he wanted more. As we live in America, in the land of plenty, we have to be careful that we don't fall into the same trap of greed that Zacchaeus did uh, and go to the, the, the mode of just collecting more and more and more just to have more. We need to be careful that we don't become greedy. When we were born with no possession, the love received was our concession. No worries, no fears, no troubles, no fuss. In mother's arms, we put our trust. But as we grew, we looked and craved and all too soon became enslaved. The more we saw, the more we wanted. Our quest for more became undaunted. Our thirst for more could not be quenched. The more we grasped, the tighter we clenched. We scampered and gathered and gathered to hoard. Possessions became our master and lord. And when we were old, with our treasures all heaped, a sad example of what has greed reaped, our fists still clenched in grasping motion. Till our death, our hands are open. I want to encourage listeners today to make sure that you don't go through your hands with your fists clenched, holding on to everything that you have. Make sure you go through life and be generous and give to others. Have your hands open before you leave this world and let God's love rule your heart and give generously uh, to your church and give generously to mission projects. Give generously to those that are in need. Don't fall into the same path as Zacchaeus did. But there's great news. Even if you fit the description of Zacchaeus, God is still calling. God's called Zacchaeus to come down from the tree. Zacchaeus came down from the tree invited him to come to his house, and God saved Zacchaeus' house and his household through his son, Jesus Christ. The story of Zacchaeus has men, won many people to the Lord. God used an unlikely man, Zacchaeus, to lead many to the Lord. Not only did, does God call the, unweak, the, the, un, the unlikely to shame the wise, but also God calls the weak. God calls the weak in verse 27 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It says, God chose the weak to shame the strong. In this passage of scripture, uh, I chose the prodigal son out of Luke chapter 15 to think about those who are weak. God chooses the weak to shame the strong. You know, God called this prodigal son. This prodigal son uh, was a young man that was completely out of control. 
this young man was a, a young man that uh, had problems with temptations. He gave in to temptations that were, that were luring him away. This man uh, f fell out of the Lord's will because he gave in to temptations. Many people today are out of control just like this young man. Many people fall uh, to the addiction of alcohol. Many people fall to the addiction of drugs. They give in to their temptations. They're weak in certain areas and they give in. Uh, they give in to the, the temptations that are in this world. And many people today are still are out of control, just like this young man was. This young man was so selfish, he gave in to temptation. He was so selfish that he asked for his inheritance before he rightly deserved it. You know the story. The prodigal son I went to his father and asked him for his inheritance, and it was just like saying, Dad, I just wish you were dead so I could claim my inheritance and claim my money. And so the father, unconditionally loving his son, this prodigal son that was very disrespectful, gave his son his inheritance. This son was very weak, and he went and squandered his inheritance. He was so weak that he gave into the temptation and, and ran with the wrong crowd, and they took advantage of him, and he failed miserably in managing his inheritance. He gave in to temptation. He fell because he was weak, but God used this weak young man to showcase the unconditional love of our Heavenly Father. After this young man, the prodigal son, spent all of the inheritance of his dad's inheritance, of what was rightfully his dad's because his dad was still alive, he asked for that inheritance, he went and squandered it, and in the middle of his, of his life, in the middle of his chaos, Scripture records that he looked up and said, I have sinned against heaven, I have sinned against my father. God called this prodigal son in the midst of his disobedience, in the midst uh, of his chaos, in the midst of his dark darkness, God called out and used this weak young man to showcase the unconditional love of our Heavenly Father. This story has been preached for ages. This story has reached millions for Christ. You may be here tonight or you may know someone that fits the bill of this prodigal son that is weak and that falls to temptation often. Tell them to never give up. God still calls the weak to shame the strong. Never give up. Wherever you are in life, God is still calling. God is still calling, calling everyone uh, to receive him into their heart and follow them with all of their life. God calls the weak to do mighty works. The great evangelist D.L. Moody uh, was untrained, but he bought, brought many to Christ. D.L. Moody's former education, he went through the fifth grade. He just, he just, school did not agree with him. And, you know, back in those days uh, when D.L. Meadow grew up in the 1800s, uh, if a child did not excel in school, uh, they had to go, they had to go work uh, with their family. And so D.L. Moody, uh, he completed through the fifth grade and he quickly grew tired of working on his family's farm. Uh, the great D.L. Moody, he moved to Boston to secure employment. Well, after not being able to find a desirable uh, employment, he had to settle working at his uncle's shoe shop in Boston. Uh, his uncle hired his nephew, D.L. Moody, to, be a sh to work in his shoe shop, uh, but he, he did this on one condition. His employment was conditional on the fact that he had to attend church and attend church regularly at the Mount Vernon Congregational Church on a regular basis, and Moody agreed to go to church. Now, he's 17 years old. Think about this. 17 years old. Uh, his uncle uh, instructed him that he had to go to church if he was going to maintain his employment because he knew that Moody would probably get into mischief. And so at 17 years old, he was forced to go to church and go to Sunday school. Wow, what a great idea. Now, if you were to force a 17-year-old to go to Sunday school today and to go to church today, it would probably fall under the lines of maybe mistreatment. Uh, but I'm just going to tell you that, uh, it, parents, it is okay to encourage, highly encourage your children to go to church. It is okay to highly encourage your children to come to Sunday school. But it's something that you have to plan to do way ahead of time. It's a great idea to encourage your children to come to church with you. But you have to understand that as a child, you're probably going to have to use force by dragging them to church, but that's okay. Remember that your family is not a democracy. Your family is a dictatorship. And the mom and the dad have to be the, the household leaders and have to be the Christian leaders of the home. Scientists have proven that our brains do not stop maturing until they're in their early 20s. So that tells me that our children 
need the guidance of their parents all the way through their teenage years, even into college. They need solid advice from Christian parents. Parents, we need to be careful that we don't fall off the wagon and, and not be responsible and bring our children up uh, in the eyes of God. It is okay to drag your children to church. It is okay if they don't want to go. Still bring them to church. Uh, D.L. Moody was made to go to church and became one of the greatest evangelists of all time. Parents, I want to encourage you to invest in your children. Parents, I can't stress this enough. Don't let your child go to sleep at night without telling them that you love them. Don't let your child go to sleep at night without them knowing that they are okay with you and that you are proud of your children. Don't let your child go to sleep at night without praying, to the, praying with them and lifting them up to the Lord and asking God to lead and guide their life. Don't let your child go a day without you reading a word of scripture to them or sharing a devotional thought with them. Guys, we're in a mess today, not because the world is out of sorts. We're in a mess today because the Christian church is out of sorts, and we have not been raising our children the way that we should. You say, Brother David, raising children is tough. I know that children is raise, raising children is tough. I have two of my own, but it's a fight worth fighting for. We have to fight for their hearts, we have to fight for their souls, and we have to bring them to church and let God be poured into them. It is so important to bring your children to church and allow them to be taught by awesome Sunday school teachers. God calls to our children when we bring them to Sunday school and they're taught the Bible through wonderful Sunday school teachers like Miss Linda Williams. God is calling to our children and speaking to them when we experience a worship service like we have today. God speaks through the message in the song. God speaks through our pastor and the children's message. God speaks through his word. Our children are weak. We need to encourage them and plan to bring them to church every, every time the doors are open. But you can't decide to do this on a Saturday night. You, it has to be done and planned ahead of time because your children will try to stay up all night Saturday night so they can sleep in Sunday. You have to plan way ahead of time. I can't stress enough that we have to bring our children to church. Dwight L. Moody's uncle required him to go to church at 17 and required him to go to Sunday school. His, his Sunday school teacher was none other than Edward Kimball. Edward Kimball visited Moody at his shoe store and he went to and found Dwight L. Moody in the, in the uh, stock room. He carried on a conversation with Dwight L. Moody, shared the love of Christ with him. Dwight L. Moody came to know the Lord not long after that, gave his life to Christ, and Dwight L. Moody is in the line of evangelists that led Billy Graham to the Lord. Now think about that. Think about that. Because Dwight L. Moody's uncle made him go to church, Billy Graham came to know the Lord through a long line of evangelists that Dwight L. Moody started leading to, leading to the Lord. It's so important to understand that in the midst of darkness, God still calls. And Dwight L. Moody ministered in one of the darkest times in the country, in the nation in, the nation in which we live. He ministered during the time of the Civil War. So God still calls in the midst of darkness. Not only does God uh, call the weak to shame the strong, not only does God call the... Uh, not only did God call to choose the foolish to shame the wise, but also God calls uh, the weak to shame the strong and also the lowly and the despised. God calls the despised and chooses them to work in his kingdom. God called the woman at the well in John chapter 4. And this is a very unlikely call that God made because as, as, as we're living in a time when it seems like our country is divided because of racial tensions in different cultures, the nation of Israel also was living in a time where there's racial tensions uh, because you see the woman at the well was a Samaritan. And Jesus used this example and chose to go this route to teach his disciples and his followers to reach out to different cultures and different races. Uh, you know the story. As Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus said, we need to go through Samaria. In John chapter 4, verse 3, we need to go through Samaria. Now, in that day, 
uh, Jews would generally travel around Samaria because they hated the Samaritans so much. They would not even take the shortest distance and go across Samaria to get to their destination. They would go around Samaria. But Jesus said, we need to go to Samaria. And so he led his disciples to Samaria. His disciples traveled into town while Jesus carried on a conversation uh, with this Samaritan woman. And this, this woman was a Samaritan. They were Jews. And racial tensions were real. You know, racial tensions have been around for a long, long time. I go on different mission trips in different countries, and I travel uh, to the Dominican Republic, and we travel across the Dominican Republic, the island, and then we travel over into Haiti and cross the border. Now, to me, I can't tell the difference between a Haitian and a Dominican. They all look the same to me. But the Haitians and the Dominicans know each other, and they, they know their different races, the different cultures, and they don't get along. So it's not about color. It's just about people being different. And we have to learn to embrace differences and learn to give grace and learn to reach out to people with grace as God has given grace to us. We have to be careful that we treat people with the same kind of grace that God treats us with. Because you see, if we don't treat people with the same kind of grace that Jesus treats us with, we actually tear down the bridge in which grace comes across to us. To put that in simple terms, if we can't love people, whether they're red, yellow, black, or white, if we cannot love them unconditionally, we've got a heart problem. And we need to make sure that we're in the right place and that we need to make sure we have a, our, our relationship with God is right because we should be able to reach across all different types of cultures and barriers to reach people for Christ. Jesus chose this Samaritan woman, uh, chose the lowly and the despised, to make a point to his disciples that it's okay to reach across cultural barriers and, and share God's love. You know, she was a the Samaritan woman was not only a Samaritan, but she also was a woman, let's just say, that, that she got around pretty well. Uh, back in that day, they would call her a prostitute. Uh, she had been married five times, as we see in Scripture. She arrived at the middle of the well that day to, to, to avoid criticism and to avoid embarrassment and to avoid ridicule, ridicule because she was an outcast. But Scripture states in John chapter 4 that Jesus came to her, carried on a gospel conversation, offered her living water, and she received it. God called out in the midst of racial tension. God called out. Jesus went to this woman and spoke to her through Jesus Christ, offered her living water, and she became a believer. And we read in Scripture also later in the chapter that because of this woman believing, she went back home. And many believed that day because of the testimony of the Samaritan woman. And if you follow through in Scripture, Jesus followed up with the people that she talked to. And many believed that day because of her testimony and her receiving and answering the call of Christ. Each, three, each one of these people that I've highlighted today in this, this message, they had a choice. When God called and God spoke, they could either accept the call or they could decline it. Every one of these people in this passage of Scripture, they accepted the call and made a difference in a dark world. We're living in a dark world right now, but God is always calling. God is always calling for people that will listen. There's many unlikely people in the Bible that God called and they responded if you remember, Abraham was very old, but he, God called. Abraham responded. Joseph was, was abused by his brothers, but God called. He responded and, and changed the outcome of the history of Egypt. Job went bankrupt, but he, he responded. Moses had a speech problem, but he still responded to God's call. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. The Samaritan woman, she was divorced. Noah liked to drink a little bit. Jeremiah was young. Jacob was a cheater. David was a murderer and also an adulterer. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Peter denied Christ three times. Martha worried about everything. Zacchaeus was small and he was money hungry. The disciples fell asleep while Jesus was praying. The list could go on and on. But God is calling. Will you respond? God is calling. God is calling the unlikely, the weak, and the despised. God is calling the weak, the unlikely, and the despised because when weak people like myself respond, when weak people, unlikely people, like people gathered in this congregation tonight, respond to God's call, 
God's power is showcased. God's power uh, is highlighted. And we see that God is still in the life-changing business today. In the midst of the darkest time in the history of the nation of Israel, it had been 400 years since they heard from a prophet. The darkest time in their history. They had not heard from a prophet in over 400 years, and an angel spoke to the Virgin Mary. He said, a son is going to be born. And Mary said, I'm willing. God, whatever you want, she surrendered. I'm willing. She carried the Son of God. An angel spoke to Joseph, and Joseph responded that he would take Mary as his wife. As you know, Jesus was born. They laid him in a manger and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. In the middle of the darkest time in the nation of Israel, the Son of God was born. The angels went to the unlikely shepherds out in the field while they were watching their flocks and announced in a glorious song, Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. In the darkest time in the nation of Israel, God called out. Mary responded. Joseph responded. Jesus Christ was born. And now we have a way of salvation. And we have a way to go to God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, because of his sacrifice on the cross. God is still calling. In the midst of everything today, God is still calling. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 says this, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. God is calling. Will you respond? Dear Heavenly Father, we bow today. We know that you're calling. God, you call and ask us to simply follow you. There are people here tonight and people listening today that need to respond to your call. God, I pray that you would move in this place, move in the hearts of the listeners to respond to your call, even in the days in which we live, to make a difference in this world and go out and win the lost for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. And we have to do the hymn of invitation a little bit different today because of the social distance measures we have to, that we have to adhere by for safety reasons and to keep you healthy. You see there's a number on the screen there. And if you're listening and God has called you, and you know without a shadow of a doubt God is tugging at your heart, make sure and call this number or send a text message to this number. There will be a minister waiting to respond to whatever the need is that will be very compassionate and pray with you on whatever decision it is that you need to make. But God is calling to everyone that is hearing this message in some way. God is calling some to salvation. God is calling Christians to a closer walk with Him. God is calling Christians to be Christians again. This altar is open for anyone that would like to come and pray during our hymn of invitation. There is not a more important time in our nation than now for Christians to respond and come to this altar. This altar should be full with everyone here tonight to pray for our leaders and our nation, that God would heal this nation, that God would unite this nation once again. But it's got to start with Christians. It has to start with the church. Are you willing to come to this altar and pray today? God is calling for you to come just as you are. Please respond as we stand and sing our hymn of invitation. Just as
thank you for worshiping with us today. And uh, as we continue to worship, there's several ways that you can give to the Lord's ministry here at Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. Uh, if you would like to mail your check to the address there uh, on the screen, uh, you can drop your check in a uh, lock box outside the office. Uh, whatever the Lord leads you to do, we really appreciate how you're supporting the Lord's ministry here at Pleasant Hill Baptist Church. God is doing great things through the ministry uh, here. Also, if you're here worshiping tonight as you exit tonight after the postlude, uh, they're offering boxes at each door and be, uh, be kind and drop those there. And also get you a squirt of Germex on the way out to uh, clean your hands and uh, stay sanitary. Uh, but we really appreciate you worshiping with us today online, on Facebook and YouTube. God bless you, and we look to see you again. Let me voice our benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, how great it is to be in your house today and to worship you. And God, to understand that you are still calling in this dark day in which we live. God, I pray that every person in this room and every person listening would respond to your call. And God, make a positive difference in this world this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.